Back to you, Padi Asanga. We have so many Cameroonian Anglophone historians who know our true history. Why, for the past six years, have they not come together? Because we may, we may assume that maybe if the government were to appoint some person, the government would want to, um, to, to, to influence the way they talk. Why have uh, Anglophone historians themselves not come together independently and say, please, enough of the lies telling, this is our history. Where are they? Uh, Leo, um, uh, Cameroon, in its, com uh, in its current configuration, is a post-colonial entity fabricated by white boys. Those are my words, and I stream them. It is a post-colonial identity, a post-colonial entity. Anglophone is a post-colonial entity. Francophone is a post-colonial entity fabricated by white boys. And um, you saw this, my friends, I don't want to be very harsh, but you saw them run to the white boys to tell the white boys, oh, our history, our history. The white boys told you, told them that we have moved on from your history. We don't want to know about your history. We want to know about your future and how we can cooperate together. That's where the debate is. And I think those historians have understood it and they are doing exactly what it takes because history is written from the perspective of the person who narrates it. And you know, part of our history is still oral. You go and we still have people in our communities who were there, the UPCs, the one Cameroonians, the Nde to Madrapis, you have the contemporaries like the SDF, and everybody the Osende Afanas clan, the Baminikes, the Makizas, as you want to call it. Everybody has his own story to tell. But if we accept that we are one Cameroon, we are Cameroonians, uh, we should be looking for solutions and not going to write history that is very conflicting depending, from, of, uh, depending on which camp you come from. That's where we find ourselves. And I think that historians... They know that and they understand that because they uh, believe in what they believe in and Cameroon should move forward learning from its history. We should rather learn from our history rather than castigating our history and throwing blames to people who are already dead. If you want to punish those who are dead for our history, then uh, you will have to give right to people like uh, Andre Blaise Esama who go around and start decapitating monuments that were planted by French, monuments that were planted by the Germans. So our history for now, it's a bit obsolete because it is not written by us. We don't, we have streets in Douala, Yaoundé and other places. We have names, Victoria, that are not reflective of who we are, but reflective of the people that gave us these post-colonial identities that I'm talking of. So I will not get into that row, Leo. I'm rather sorry. And I want to thank uh, our historians for understanding the geopolitics and the contemporary uh, uh, politics of the world and how it works. Nobody listens to your history, but they want to see how they will work with you so that you gain and they gain. That's where we stand today. Thank but, you, Leo. But, but if that's your posture, how, how do you... Uh, what do you tell those who think and insist that we must uh, re go back uh, to history, 1961? We, we go to history to adjust. We go to history to adjust, but we don't go to hi in, in history to castigate. You have two types of historians. Historians who learn from their past and to correct, and you, you have historians who remain in their past and, and keep on uh, in this infernal cycle of castigation and then they run to the white boys when the white boys come and tell them that look uh if you belong to the system that that united nations then you voted to be part of cameroon and part of cameroon is also Nigeria. that's the part of that you are running from and when you get to that point of when you get to that point you have to know where you are going to 
you will not come and sit and begin to tell somebody who wants to do business that, oh, uh, John Gufoncha was strict and so on. So if John Gufoncha was strict, why were you, why was your own grandfather who was supposed to present you at the time? We have to move on because the world is evolving. Where was China in 1984? Where was Singapore in 1984? The white boys don't, they listen to China, they listen to Singapore, they listen to Japan, they listen to India. They will not listen to us because we keep on crying like they asking for their, their, their how do you call it, uh, their, their feeling buttons. That's it. That's where we are. So we are Cameroon, we respect international law, we have signed the convention, we have, uh, uh, we have fight this and this convention. Then you stick to that convention and not taking, telling people who want to make business, who want to develop their country about your history, and then you start throwing blames on people who are no more. Okay. Where does it work? <laughs> okay. Um, yes, Mr.